Hey, what's going on, CrossFit Regional Athletes? Steve Rast here along with Sam J and Eugene CrossFit. And today we're going to be talking about what trigger point manipulations you're going to be able to use to best optimize your performance. Right now, we're looking at regional workout number one, which consists of deadlifts and handstand push-ups, be it individual or team effort. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Sam as an athlete and the deadlift position, we're going to have him do a couple reps, we do a couple handstand push-ups, then we're going to talk about how we could put his body in a better position to best express its power without really exhausting it and just have a better overall performance. So first things first, Sam, let me have you go ahead and get your deadlift set up for me. All right, good. Looks good. All right, back flat, take deep breath, give me two reps. Okay. Not bad, lightweight, okay? Now keep, remember where he was at right there, because we're gonna come back and we're gonna release his psoas on one side, and you're gonna see what a difference that makes in his pulling and bracing power on that deadlift. But before we get to that, we're gonna take a look at some handstand push-ups. So, Sam, if you would. All right. Kick it up with that handstand push-up. Good lockout, comes down, touches the head. Excellent, kick up. Comes down, gets two, good job. Okay, come on up here, Sam. All right, so first things first, what we want to look at with that deadlift again. It's okay to be a little bit tight in that posterior chain for this workout. We don't need to worry about too much back there. What I am concerned about is how we're going to be able to activate our TVA in here, brace against it, and have excellent hip function. The key to that is going to be the psoas. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our TP massage ball right here, boom, and you're going to locate a spot about two inches on either side of your navel. While you're standing up, you can go ahead and just sort of prep that area right there, get a little blood flowing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Sam down on the ground because you're going to want your body weight against this. Now, if you're brand new to trigger point, I recommend maybe just going through this two times. But ideally, the program is going to call for four cycles through this. So Sam, go ahead and pop down for me in that prone position. Cool. It's locating right a couple inches to the left side of that navel. All right. So the program it calls for is going to only move during the exhale. So he's going to take a deep breath in, exhale, and he's going to cobra off that upper body during the exhale. Good. As soon as he gets up there, another deep breath in, exhale, and he's going to come back down, just settling his body weight on there. Good. To take a deep breath in, exhale and come back up one more time. Now he's going to reposition his arms out in front, take a deep breath in, and pull his body forward. And he's not actually dragging it forward, he's just creating some traction on top of that ball. Take another deep breath in, exhale, and as he's continuing to pull, we're going to lift this same side leg as what side we're uh, manipulating, driving that heel back, pulling body forward, Opposing forces, fulcrum on top of that ball, deep breath in, exhale, and come back down. Good. Sam, so go ahead and stand up for me. Like I said, normally we do that at least two, maybe up to four times. For the sake of time today, we're only going to do it one time through, okay? So, Sam, go ahead and move around a little bit, all right? And let's check out those deadlifts again real quick. All right. Go ahead and just get that set up position. All right, looks good. Go ahead and pull. All right. Good. Relax, all right? Now, I don't know if you noticed it in the video, but his hip and shoulder relation to the bar is a much better optimized pulling power position, I should say, right there. And Sam, we only work one side of your body, so did you notice a difference doing those two reps, 60 kilos on how it felt, pulling the weight, getting in position, and bracing against those abs. Uh, yeah, when I sucked in the air and tagged, I could feel it this side, I couldn't, the side to release, had no pressures. Effortless, you might say. Hey, the easier we can make it to do these workouts, better. If you release that, it's gonna make a huge difference. All right, next up, we're gonna look at the handstand push-up. First thing we wanna do is we wanna look at releasing the trigger point on the pec. You're gonna love this one. We get in here, and we'll immediately notice the difference in what that does to the whole relationship for this shoulder joint right here, all right? So to put it in a better position, 
Good stuff right there. And then we're going to look at the lats as far as an overhead position. We're going to see what the combination of pecs and lats does to your ability to perform handstand push-ups. So, for both of these manipulations, you're going to need your TP massage ball and block. All right, boom, right here. So for the placement, working on his left side, you'll take your left arm, put your hand on your pec, and the ball will go right underneath, right where your palm would be. Then we're going to forward leverage, place the block on top of that. Same side hand goes under, other hand on top, elbows nice and high. Now the program calls for two pivots, two pulls. So what he's going to do is take a deep breath in, exhale and pivot. Good. So just sort of pivoting right on one spot. Not big circles, just staying right in that spot underneath the palm would be. Good. So two pivots and then two pulls. So as Sam's doing that, you can see what it looks like. I will explain. We're pulling the ball and the muscle towards the armpit. Again, not rolling across a large piece of real estate. Just the ball staying in one specific spot. Pull the ball and muscle. All right, good. Go ahead and relax. Again, that was one time through. You're going to want to do at least two, yeah, maybe up to four of those. Okay? So go ahead and set those down for me real quick. Stand and face the camera. All right? Okay? So what we want to look at right here, all right, is the positioning of the shoulder. So I'm going to put my hands right here. But if you notice, all right, there's an actual significant difference between the left side and the right side. The right side is higher, and the left side, which you can see, is back a little bit. That right side is sort of protracted and alleviated. What that does is this is not an optimized pushing or uh, position for the shoulder. This one's going to be much better, especially once you get through a few more series. All right, next we're going to go on and do the lats. Okay, so what you're going to want here is some sort of wall or vertical object that you can brace and put some weight against. So again, with the block and the ball, all right, on over. It's going to get that set up against the wall right there. And the landmark we're looking for is going to be right about here, below the armpit in the meaty portion of that lat right there. So what Sam's going to do is place the ball, all right, Notice the feet are away from the wall, so we can actually lever in against it. All right, in the program it calls for four cross frictions first. So again, only moving during the exhale. So you take a deep breath in, exhale, and cross friction. Very similar to that pivot we were doing with pec. Going through four of those, again, not moving during the exhale, just doing that cross friction during the exhale. After he gets through four of those, then he's going to do two reaches. So with that hand overhead. We're going to be basically working on the length tension ratio of that muscle and really putting it under some traction. So arms nice and straight, reaching overhead. Good. Gets through two reaches, then he's going to reach up with that opposite hand and two pulls. All right. Now really putting the pressure on, driving the hips into the wall. Ball's not really moving, but the body's moving against the ball. So two reaches. That's one time through right there. Okay, good. All right, so go ahead and set those down for me, Sam. All right, cool. Stand here for me. Go ahead and go hands overhead. All right. So looking at the camera, arm nice and straight, not as natural to keep that arm straight. A little bend in the elbow, which we don't want. We want to be able to stack those bones as we sit. Go ahead and turn this way. All right. Now, what you can see is this right arm is pulled forward. This left arm is nice and upright, okay? So again, that tight lat's gonna pull you forward out of good pressing position. So last thing, Sam, go ahead and give me two more handstand push-ups. Okay. Tough to see on a bilateral movement using the whole body. So Sam, let's get your feedback. How did it feel, left arm versus right arm, in that handstand push-up? Uh, my right arm that we didn't release, it's like creaky, you can hear it pop as it goes up, I have to press a little harder with it. Left arm kind of just floats, it's a little seamless. Good. Floats, seamless, all good things to hear. The, you've got the strength, we just got to get your body in that position where it's easy sending your weight up against gravity. We're going to do that by releasing muscles that will pull us out of position, namely pecs and lats. Alright, get to it and good luck with workout number one.